Okay, so now that we have our uh, basics set up in Renorex Studio, let's go create a recording. I've got my data miner cube open, I've got Renorex Studio. Um, the first test I'll create is to validate the element connection functions. Also for my test, I'll work in a test driven way. Uh, let's go take a look in data miner. So um, to open up the elements, I'll use the search box. So I'll go to Rx uh, source elements. I'll change the value of the saved number. Close it. I'll go to the destination element. Check the and check the value of the saved number. I see it's exactly the same here. So to be on the safe side, um, I'll do those actions twice. So in the source element, uh, change the value. I'll change it to five now, and then in the destination element, it's also changed to five. So Probably there's an element connection already active. Let's take a look uh, on my destination element. I indeed have a active um, element connection. Uh, so I'll disable this one by setting it to none and save. Okay, and then let's take a look again at the plant test. So we open the source element, we set it to zero, and then we go into the destination element. And in this case, it's still five, so our validation test should fail. Okay, let's uh, check how we can create this test in Runorix. Uh, so first thing I'll do is add a recording. So on my test case, I right click at a new recording module. Um, there are already some recordings um, in, the, in the data miner cube library to set element connections. But uh, for the sake of this training, I'll start from scratch. Um, I just notice here that there's a problem with the recordings folder. So I'll include this one first. Okay. And now when I add a recording, I should be able to select the folder. That's right. Um, okay. So I'll create a recording and I'll name this uh, set source parameter value. Okay, let's create it. Okay, and then we get an empty recording. Um, so there's two ways to add items to a recording. The first one is by simply clicking the record button here on top. And then we go into our cube. You can see the recording window here at the bottom. Um, so I'll just perform my actions. As you can see, again, I have the red um, outline to, to identify the item I'm about to click. So I'm going to click in the search box um, if, as you can see, as soon as I click here in the recorder, also an item is added. So I clicked uh, on my mouse using the left mouse button. And if I highlight the little eye icon here, um, I can see a, a snapshot or a screenshot of the search bar. Okay, so then I'll type rx underscore source element and enter. OK, 
Okay, and that opens up my uh, source element. So then I'll click, try to click the, the parameter value, but it looks like the, the tracking is no longer following correctly. Can I select the value? No. Okay, I'll just click it. Um, if I hover the eye icon, um, let's see, it's not exactly what I want, so I'll stop the recording by just clicking the, the stop button here. And then let's see what I have. I have uh, something clicking the cube header search box. Um, it's added, in fact, it has added an entire new main window to the data miner cube library. So that's not what I want. I want to use the exist already existing items. Um, so I'll delete these. But I'll try and keep my actions. Okay, delete um, this entire main window item. And as you can see now, the items are no longer available in the repository. And all of my actions here get a red exclamation mark, an error. And when hovering, it says the repository item cannot be found. Select no item or restore the missing item to the repository. I'll do something else. I'll just drag items from my existing repository into my recording and that should fix it. So I'm going to look for the search box. I'll just use the search on the repository. Okay, cube header search box looks like the one I need. Okay, and then here our second action was um, was a key sequence, but as you can see, um, there's quite a bit of special characters here. That's not at all what I typed. So I can just um, select it and then click the three little dots here. Um, so what I did is it's type the R then capital X then it sees uh, or it recorded a shift key down then the um, underscore then shift key down again then the S and then source shift key up again then source er so the, the key recording wasn't uh, completely on here um, so i'll clear this and just type again rx underscore um, source element okay Okay, so it's updated and yeah, then also it had a bug because I uh, made a mistake during my typing there. So I'll delete this piece. Okay, and then I have the return, which I clicked to confirm that I wanted to open that element. And then I have a uh, mouse click at a location that's not the one I want. So I'll also remove this one. Okay, and in between this uh, element and return, I noticed um, if I type something here, it can take like uh, a few milliseconds, uh, maybe up to a second before something is actually showing in uh, in the search. So I'll add in a very short delay here. 
So I right click, add new action, delay, um, it's defaulting to 300 milliseconds. I think that should be enough in this case. Okay, so I see that here for the key sequences, I still have some errors because the item is not found, but key sequence is just typing basically. So I'll uh, select no item and that fixes the error. Okay, and so then let's go and take a look at that parameter control. I'll open up Renrex Spy. and data miner cube okay and i'll track it from spy uh, so this time i do get the nice red box around the parameter control uh, let's take a look uh, so it's a text with empty caption that's expected because the, the edit box is indeed empty and so parameter control is input box. Um, it's in a value container and it's in a parameter control. This one's interesting parameter control with PID 110. So that's the actual uh, parameter ID in the protocol here. So if I stop tracking for a minute and write click or double click in fact um, I can see here that my parameter ID is indeed 110 back to the data page and now I so it's in card page content uh, let's maybe switch to part editor um, and disable some of these so basically i'm just interested in the cards so oh yeah maybe leave the card body and it's in the rx source element card okay and then it's that one's in the card container and that one's in the workspace so that's pretty consistent with the structure we already had. Um, let's take a look here uh, in, um, in our repository. So we have a card, a card body, uh, not in the page tree, uh, in the page content. And then we have some specific for Microsoft platform here. Uh, might be under the normal parameters. Uh, it's we're looking for a right parameter. So input box of parameter with parameter ID. That looks correct. And so if I take a look at the part here, it's indeed going using parameter control underscore PID. So that's the same thing we have here in spy um, and then the text parameter id is um, using a variable okay so i'll drag this one in and i want to click it okay uh, and then i want to add a key sequence again uh, so key sequence, um, I want to say zero and then another key sequence. Um, I can right click here and um, enable keystroke recording. And now if I hit the return key, it will uh, change it to return between uh, brackets so that that's the key code for the return key okay and so basically this should work i think um, we might want to still close the card 
So I'll track, in fact, I'll just um, search here. For a close card, there's already a close card button. Okay, I'll add it here uh, and just click. Okay, save it. Um, and then I should be able to just run this recording. Okay, I'm getting warning here. Uh, I'm trying to run only this module. This means that variables in it will use their default values. Okay, let's cancel. Um, so I'll need to add some data. Uh, I can see here I have two unbound variables for this um, test case. So I'll go into data binding and take a look. I need the element name and the parameter ID. Okay, so let's add those. Element name is Rx source element and parameter ID was 110. Okay, so let's uh, fill these in or let's link these. Okay. And then we can run our test case. I'll close by for now. Okay, it's taking a few moments to build the test. Now bring Data minor cube to the front. Okay, so it's filling in the element name. Then the element is open and it's setting the value to zero. All right, so that is what we need. And it's also close to cards. If I see that correctly, yes, it also closed the card. So that's our first recording working as expected. Okay, then for our second recording, um, we need to validate the parameter value in the destination. So I'll add another recording. I'll, again, I'll keep it in the element connections here. We'll add some recordings uh, in, the, in the data miner cube library later on. Okay, so validate uh, destination parameter value okay let's see what we can reuse here because i think we can reuse some stuff so everything for opening the elements we can basically reuse so i'll just copy all of this from the set source parameter uh, value recording and paste it here, just control C, control V. Um, and then what do we need to change? We don't need to click the input box and we don't need to um, set an actual value. Instead, what we need to do is um, validate the value. So I'll add a new action. Um, you know, in fact, um, I can um, say per. Um, Parameter value of parameter with PID. I think that should be correct. 
I can just drag this in there and I'm not going to click it this time, but I am going to add a validation. And I want to validate that the an attribute is equal to your value, my value in this case. Um, so I want to validate the text and I want it to be equal to zero. Okay, and then that's it. Okay, uh, the validation is here and I also need to connect it to some variables. So I go back into the data binding window and what do I need? I need to set again an element name and a parameter ID. Um, so just to avoid confusion, I'll rename this to source element name and I'll add another one called destination element name. Okay, so the name is uh, Rx destination element. I'm going to link this to the element name and then in the actual destination element, I still need to check that this uh, parameter ID, uh, I'm lucky here because uh, in this protocol, the parameter ID is also 110. So I can um, link it to the same uh, to the same data item. Okay, let's apply this. Um, close all my cards here and go and run my test case. Okay, so it's setting the save number to zero, closing, opening the source element. Okay, so in opening our elements for the second time where we try to open our destination elements, we made a mistake. I'll hit um, the pause key to stop my running test. Okay, and as you can see here, um, we get a report immediately in RunRX Studio. And it says the test run has been aborted by the user. Okay, so let's take a look here at my validate destination parameter. Okay, I said here um, key sequence Rx source element, uh, but this should of course be the destination element. Okay, let's save this and run again. Okay, closed. Okay, writing value to zero. It's opening the destination element. And it's reading the number there. And oh, surprise, my test failed. So this is in fact expected because I first created the validation and I can see that here in my report that the actual value found was five and the expected value was zero. I'm just noticing here that I may have forgotten to keep the decimals in mind in my test. Um, so let's take a look in my um, remote element, it's saying 5.00, so it has two decimals. And in my um, source element, there's also two decimals. So I'll need to update uh, my validation. 
so I'm not expecting zero, but zero dot zero zero. Just two. No, that's not right. Expecting zero dot zero zero. Okay. 